Optimus coming at you with another video review. And on today's episode, thanks to all of the absolutely incredible support from my Optibotomous Plus channel members, we're going to be taking a look at the new Transformers Studio Series Gamer Edition Voyager Class Megatron. Now, oddly enough, I have not been able to find the first three Gamer Edition figures. That being Bumblebee, Barricade, and Optimus Prime, until just now. These guys popped up on Amazon, and I jumped on them as quickly as I could. For the package, very nice and very similar to a lot of the Studio Series figures that we've gotten before. You got the Transformers text with the Generation logo right there. Of course, it says Transformers War for Cybertron up there, which this is based off of. Then it got a gorgeous image of Megatron right there. Absolutely stellar looking. You can see that this is the fourth figure in the series, and I love how they have like a little gamer pad right there. That's kind of fun. Come around to the side, you got an up close image of Megatron showing that he's a Voyager class. The side here, a more pullback image. And then again, because this is a studio series, you can see that there is that backdrop in there with the with the little directional control pad, which is kind of funny. Come around to the back, and as I talked about, you got the backdrop right there, because this is big screen inspired, even though it's not really a movie or show or anything like that. It's kind of a weird thing that this is part of the studio series because it's not based off of a film or anything. But a lot of people look at the War for Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron. Like that whole thing is a very cinematic kind of video game. So it kind of makes sense, but it's still a little bit weird. And then you see images of him in his robot and his vehicle mode, and of course that he transforms in 22 steps. But for the package on this oh, you got the War for Cybertron logo up there as well. But for the package on this guy, that's about it. So without further ado, let's get him out here and see how cool he actually is. All right, guys, so here... Morgan. Okay. She, she just... Wanted to say hi, but here we have the new Studio Series Gamer Edition War for Cybertron Megatron opened up in out of his packaging. For Megatron here, though, you can see that he's armored up all very nicely. Weapon storage here, you have his giant mace weapon. Obviously, his cannon can attach, as you would probably expect. Uh, this can separate into two bits right here. So if you want to have them kind of hold on, do that or however you want. You got a little handle right here. I really like this though. I like the uh, the purple color on here. It is molded in this gray plastic, but that looks really cool. And then it's bam, 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 bam. I, I could probably ward off Morgan. Oh, speaking of the devil. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, here she is again. She literally, she literally just wants to mess with me when I'm sitting here. I love my little kitties. Uh, but the vehicle mode here looks really cool. He is this hover tank sort of thing. You can see the little thruster bits here that also kind of look like tank treads kind of so he's like... You definitely do that. I really like the color also on this. You can see a very nice kind of gunmetal silver uh, right there of sorts or just a dark silver, I, I, I suppose. You got the gunmetal gray throughout it. Uh, obviously, you do have a couple extra purple bits that are highlighted throughout the entire thing as well. Really very, very nice looking, honestly. I'm quite happy with how this guy turned out. Now, again, I don't have the original one to compare it to, but the coloring on that one I can distinctly remember was very pale. Now, they did do like a premium release where it had a darker coloring, but the regular retail one did not look nearly as good as this. I really, really dig it. But vehicle mode, I mean, there's there's not really a lot going on with this guy. I mean, he's a hover tank. He's, you know, Cybertronian. You can take this off if you want to. You got a little peg hole right there. So if you wanted to take this, I don't know. Can you even? No, that won't. Well, no, I guess you can. You could maybe put that in there. I don't know. That doesn't really seem to fit all that well. That's kind of weird. Most of the time, these um, holes are... Kind of universal, but that, that's, you know, that would kind of look neat, but not, I mean, nothing. I'm just playing with stuff, you know, having a good old time. Yes, you know, that doesn't even really sit in there very well. That's, eh, weapons. Uh, but transformation-wise, it's actually 
fairly easy to do. I, I do like it. It's unique, and he definitely has a non-symmetrical look, which you can kind of see that. Obviously, this is uh, one of his arms, obviously the other arm underneath here, but vehicle mode-wise, mode he does kind of clean up pretty nicely here, so I, I do dig that. So uh, first what we're going to do, we're going to come around here and separate this. Pull that away. And then uh, this part you can just kind of pull out like that. Do that on this side as well. Pull that out just like that. And then these legs, you can kind of bring these down. You can fiddle with these. Let, let's do that now. So you're going to fold this piece up and then you're going to rotate the foot out. Uh, it does get a little bit tricky in here. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, let's move that. And then this piece here will kind of come out. It's it's you're kind of like pushing it through here this little gap area there we go just like that now when you bring this in there is a little less locking sort of thing on the inside here uh, where you want to kind of position all this get that push in right there and then take this uh, big one fold that down and then fold the small one over it just like that and then you can take the foot straighten that out this piece right here you can kind of just leave dangle right there on the back. But then once you get like that, then you can rotate it around and get that kind of out of the way. So do that on this side as well. Uh, again, you want to fold out this piece, fold that all the way down, and bring out this little foot. Again, it's a little bit tricky. There we go. Pull that out just like that. And then take this, collapse that all the way in, take the big one. Fold that down and around, and then fold the small one over it. Position that. Rotate that around just like so. Now come around here to the back. You want to take this, and this is all going to detach and pull away. And then this can actually swivel out, and it'll lock into place right there. Go ahead and take this piece right here. Bring this back. Rotate that around. And then this hinges down, and it'll sit right there. Then this piece, you want to detach this. You can bring this out. That will lock into place. Straighten out his arms. Straighten out his head. Take the chest piece. Fold that up like that. And then you want to bring these little bits out there. Fold out his hands. That, no, that's that's one of its little uh, bonus things, I, I, I guess. We, we'll touch on it. Fold that out there just like that and then just to kind of add some flair these bits when they're normally in robot mode they're going to be or uh, vehicle mode these are straight up just fold that down fold that down and then come around here and then you have this whole section right here that you're going to take this fusion cannon like that there now you could do it like that uh i think that's more video game accurate but i kind of like it like this as well because it kind of makes it look a little bit more like uh, his cartoon self. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go with it like that. And then just straighten all this out. And when you're done, there you have Megatron. It is really uh, very cool and reasonably accurate looking robot mode. And this guy really does clean up very nicely. And have a very accurate look to how he appeared in the video game. The color really does absolutely impressed me uh but i also love the weapons that he comes with obviously he needs to come with his fusion cannon that's just a given but this axe is badass i just i love everything about it it's big it's beefy it's got a nice color to it i mean the the gray it, it is what it is but the purple on here really does help to sell it i, I really dig that uh, if you don't want to have him hold it you do have uh, some weapon storage for him. Come around here to the back, and you got the hole right here that you have this little post right there that if you really wanted to, you can put that right there, and he can kind of have that slung over his back, which gives him a very gladiatorial sort of look, which fits for Megatron. And that fusion cannon is iconic for him. Uh, whether you have it like this or like that, it works perfectly fine now one thing that's interesting about these uh, gamer edition figures if you remember in the video game their hands could transform and create multiple different weapons so what they did with this was they engineered it where 
the right arm can detach. It's just held on by a peg. And then you can take this, move this away. Now this doesn't really look all that good, honestly, but you can plug that in there and you can have his arm uh, uh, fall. <laughs> there we go, let's bring that back out here. But you can plug that in there and you can have that sort of thing. Now, again, in the video game, they could all basically use the same kind of weapons. It would just attach to their arm. So if you get all of these, you can really kind of use them in a mix and match sort of way. Uh, one thing that I would say is that the, the, the peg is a little bit uh, loose. I'm probably going to have to tighten that, but it, it doesn't, it, it comes off a little bit easier than I like. It's not falling out or anything like that, but you could see it kind of pop off when I was uh, actually manipulating. And then if you wanted to, let me see. Again, you got that. I wonder if you can use this on here. Oh, you might you might be able to. Uh, for some reason, yeah, like these, they're, it's not keyed. Uh, but, like, I don't know why they wanted to make that in a way where you could do that. So you could attach that. That's kind of lame, honestly. They, I don't know why they wouldn't have done that. I mean, this is kind of keyed to go in a certain way. So, I don't know. That's That's a little... Meh, if you ask me. Uh, but the overall look on the figure is really very spectacular. Uh, I, I'm really quite happy with how he turned out. And again, I don't have that other one to compare him to, so I do apologize. But he's a good-looking figure. Voyager-wise, he's still a little bit small, I would say. I mean, I know it's not really the same kind of Cybertronian thing, but uh, here is the Cybertronian wheeljack that was in the Bumblebee movie. Also, here is a B-128. Overall, pretty good size, but those were smaller deluxes. Uh, here's a little bit bigger of a deluxe. This is obviously Ironhide. I guess for a Voyager, the only one that I can really bring in to the uh, the picture, the only one that I have right here, uh, right now, is uh, Optimus Prime. Um, again, this is all from the, the Bumblebee movie, so not really a... A fair comparison, but uh, here's a whole bunch of different scale figures that you can kind of get an idea of how big he is. But he probably doesn't hang out with a lot of Autobots, so um, here's another Voyager figure. Here is uh, Soundwave from the movie, so you can, again, get a kind of an idea of how big this version of Megatron actually is. First articulation, uh, the head here is on a swivel. You can get that looking left and right. Kind of feels like it's on a ball joint, so it's got a little bit of up and down, but really not that much. Uh, the shoulders here do rotate all the way around. They hinge in and out. You have a, a rotation at the elbow. You technically have two bends at the elbow, which is nice, but does create a weird look for it, but it's not terribly bad, I suppose. Waist does rotate. You have hips that move Forward and back, in and out. They do rotate here at the knee, but the knees, this is weird. That's as far as it goes, and then that's as far as it goes back. Uh, there is this little nub right here, which I don't know why they really need it there, but it literally stops it from being able to go any further. I mean, that's not even 45 degrees, I feel. Uh, does it really need to bend 90 degrees? I don't know, but it definitely seems weird that they decided to limit it like that. That's awkward, I would say. Uh, the toes can point. They also do have this little hinge section here so you can get a wider stance with them. But I really do dig this guy. Uh, I, I'm quite impressed, and, and that is a cool head sculpt. Let me, let me zoom in here. I mean, that is a wicked cool head sculpt. He looks grouchy, and then I love the purple color in there the red looks really good as well but that purple with the way that it's sculpted in there really does give like a energized sort of look that's really nice nice decepticon logo the rest of the color throughout them is really good you got some purple accents down on his crotch piece it's all very well done the back cleans up beautifully i mean this guy's this guy's on point i'm i'm quite impressed with how this uh, turned out. And like I said, you get that cannon on there and it just gives a completely Megatron sort of look where he is just absolutely badass. Now for his transformation back into his tank mode, first we're going to remove his fusion cannon, set that off to the side and then come around here to these little inner panels and then move those out. 
rotate his fist inside there. Do that on both sides. Just get your little fingernail in there. Rotate the fist into the forearm. Close that back up just like that, nice and neat. And we're gonna start down here with these legs. You're gonna rotate these towards the inside like so. And then you want to open all this up. So fold this piece out, fold that piece out. This here, you're going to kind of get out of the way, but then this is going to open, fold the little foot piece down, get that all the way up there, and then tuck that in. It, it does get a little bit tricky to do, but just get the foot all the way in, fold that all the way out like that, and then this piece here will close right like so. Do that on this side as well. So again, you want to open up that piece. Oh, that didn't mean to pull that up. I'll pull that up, lift this up like so, pull the foot in, get that all the way up, and then this folds in around, and then this will close just like that. And there, basically, you have the legs kind of done. Come around here to the chest. You want to open this. Pull that down. Just get that out of the way. And then this arm here is going to fold in. And then you've got little little tiny posts on the underside here that you're going to bring this over. And then uh, you got one on here as well. So make sure you fold this all the way up. And then, I'm sorry, straighten these. Bring this all the way up. Just like that. And then this is going to come in. This will, it's a little bit tricky to do. But you have to fold that piece in, locking that on the inside there. And then this will come up and lock there as well. Keep that straightened out like that. So now you have that secured to his chest section. Come on here to the back, take this piece here, lift this up and then rotate this around. This is just gonna kinda hang out there. And then fold this piece back. You've got little uh, connecting points. You've got one right up here that's gonna lock in that to that. And then underneath here, I'm gonna straighten that all the way out. So then when you bring this down, it's gonna lock this in and then you got two little tabs right here that are gonna lock underneath there. So once you push that down, these will kind of line up almost perfectly as long as it's straight and just keep that secure. And then this, Bend here at the knee, and then bring this around. Do that on both sides, and straighten all this out. Now this is definitely a little bit tricky. Yeah, you got some posts that connect here, here. You have a little square bit right here that locks in. I never really can get that one locked in, but then this attaches up here. So as long as realistically you get that one down here lined up, this is going to kind of sandwiched together and then this will lock in right here along the side come on keep that there and then this comes around and will sit right there and then like I said there's like a little post on the inside there that usually kind of can catch on to it but I never can really get it so again, bring this up, lock that there, bring this up, put that there, keep this on the back section, and then come around here to the fusion cannon, take this guy, and then you got a little post hole thing here that you're gonna put right there. Again, you can leave it like that, or if you really wanted to, you can rotate it around, and you can have it like that. Personal preference, whatever you wanna do, I'm gonna go with that just because why not but when you're done there you have megatron back in his hover tank mode and i really do enjoy this guy um is it better than that uh, original one that we got a few years ago because ultimately that's what you really got to do you got to compare it and know whether or not this is a better one to have in your collection than that other one and i i would say yes coloration is much better they give you that Studio Series feel. Vehicle Mode Wise does a great job of replicating how we looked in that video game. And that Robot Mode looks spectacular. I really think they did an outstanding job with Megatron here. And if you are a very big fan of the video game like a lot of people are, I would absolutely recommend picking this guy up. He's fun, looks great, 
transforms fairly easily and efficiently, and I think will look great in anybody's display. So all that being said, if Megatron here from the new Transformers Studio Series Gamer Edition is one that you would like to add to your collection, he is hitting various retail locations right now. So if you are looking for him, good luck and happy hunting. Or as always, you can do the real simple thing and go online to places like Big Bad Toy Store, Amazon, or even Entertainment Earth. For all of those places, I'll put links right down there in the video description where you can swing on by and check out availability on him as well as the rest of the wide range of Transformer figures. And as a special bonus to you guys, if you choose to click on my link to go to Entertainment Earth to pick him up, in addition to being able to get free shipping on orders over a certain amount, you can also save yourself 10% off of any in-stock order that you place, helping to help you save some money and at the same time show your support for my channel. But beyond that, guys, that's about it. As always, I want to thank you all so much for tuning in and watching. And until next time, this is Optobotomus saying adios, au revoir, and I'll be the same.